Excellent. Well, uh, thank you to all audience and speakers for this amazing five session symposium for acute flux in my life this and what we have learned in order to be prepared. Uh, it has been a quite amazing uh, group of uh, uh, lectures, quite amazing group of speakers, and all the audience uh, has been fantastic just being able to stay for all the five sessions and the duration of this symposium. Um, I like to emphasize that uh, uh, this is successful because there were many people around, many colleagues from uh, different institutions, different countries, and people that really have committed to acute flux in my life this and dedicated their effort to uh, 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 the success of the symposium, but not that, but also the dedication to patient care, to research, to uh, scientific work, to our understanding what is going on with acute flux in my life this and terovarial D6TA, the virology, the laboratory testing, the immunology, the early diagnosis, the patient care, and parents that have committed extremely uh, well and with a great dedication to make sure that the message about AFM is uh, keeping alive and that uh, we basically commit to the uh, recovery of all the children affected by this disease. Uh, so all of these uh, speakers uh, have done a great work. I'd like to emphasize Rebecca, uh, Rebecca, uh, and I emphasize to Roberta, I emphasize to Gigi at uh, the SRNA, who are basically advocates from uh, SRNA for helping us to uh, uh, um, give the message, not only to healthcare providers, but also their families. I'd like to uh, uh, express my gratitude to uh, Roberta Peche, who is in Holland, Netherlands, and also Andrea Salazar, who is here in Baltimore. Both of them were critical for helping us to maintain the logistic of this symposium. Uh, so to all of them, thank you. And we appreciate very much the headaches and the uh, concerns and the stress. And uh, uh, to the SRNA, thank you so much for the support uh, for the symposium. Uh, you are going to be uh, seeing many of these lectures in the uh, YouTube app. You can access all the lectures from part one, part two, part three, part four, and the lecture from today in uh, just simply by Googling AFM Virtual Symposium YouTube, and you will have access, free access to all of those lectures. Uh, again, this effort is because back in 2018, we initiated the acute flux in my life this uh, uh, working group and everybody has been extremely helpful and cooperative for uh, this uh, amazing uh, uh, and dedicated uh, uh, work. Um, I'd like to remind you that the NIH acute flux in my life is a natural uh, history study is going on, is active. If there is any question about the NIH FM uh, natural history study, Jill Griffin at uh, UAB, University of Alabama in Birmingham, is available for answering questions. The colleagues at CDC uh, work very hard and they have been quite dedicated to make sure that people understand AFM and the AFM surveillance by CDC is critical for understanding what is going on. And to all of our colleagues in the acute flux in my life is group, thank you so much. And all parents and families, make sure that you keep in contact with your providers, your healthcare providers and the groups in different areas of the country working with AFM. Uh, I will pass the microphone to my dear colleague, uh, uh, Christina Sadowski at the Kennedy Krieger, Christina. Yeah, so I have been reflecting on this symposia uh, on AFM a little bit and realized a few thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the first one is, uh, is a sobering one. In the context of this pandemia, when we're looking uh, to the end of it, we're looking to the other side to return to normal, 
we all need to realize that for the children that have uh, neurologic residual deficits related to AFM, there is no return to normal. They each have to fashion a new normal every day and consistently live with it while looking for ways to improve their function. So we can all learn from their experience. The second thought I had is um, that two uh, foundations for progress are education and leadership, both pragmatic and, uh, and visionary. And I think it is very apparent that we have both in the small AFM community. It is a strong but small AFM community. And I wanted to thank the parents, the advocates like SRNA, CDC, Specialist Janelle, uh, Sarah, and Alex, scientists and clinicians who all came together to serve as both leaders and educators. And the third thing is a big thank you to Carlos for being a tireless road opener, an advocate, a supporter, uh, a guidance counselor, and much, much more for all of us. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Christina. And with this, I think that uh, we are going to uh, finish our virtual symposium. Hopefully next year we will bring an updated version of the symposium. And to the audience, family, parents, and colleagues, and healthcare providers, thank you so much for your dedication. And stay tuned. And we will keep fighting for the acute fluximylitis community and uh, children affected and families affected by this disorder. Thank you and have a good night and good enjoy night. your weekend. Bye bye.